Hey everyone, welcome to the tailgate. I'm Brian, the host of this little show, and today's video is for new hikers and for folks who are going to be involved in Trek. If you're involved in Trek, you know who you are. So uh, let's get this video started. So you're uh, probably asking yourself, who is this guy and why should I pay attention to anything he has to say when it comes to like hiking? Well, I've spent pretty much my whole life hiking uh, up in the mountains in Utah and in and around here in Maryland where I live now. I've also been trail running for many years. And so I've had a fair bit of experience on the things uh, that happen on the trail, especially as it relates to footwear and about how my feet perform on long hikes and on trail runs. Okay, the first thing to do is head over to Walmart or Target and buy uh, some moleskin. And moleskin comes in a larger pack um, it's not very expensive, maybe a dollar or two, and then you take it out and then you cut it up into little strips like this. And the first thing you need to do is take one of these strips and then put it on the back of each of your heels before you start hiking. This is gonna knock down a lot of potential problems for um, if your heel rubs the back of your shoe if it's not tied down well enough. So get you some moleskin and then have a bunch on hand. Start with this on the back of your heel before the hike and then if you uh, feel any other hot spots during the hike, you can you know, stop the hike and then take your shoe and sock off and then put additional moleskin in areas where you're feeling the rubbing and where you're feeling hot spots happening. So yeah, have moleskin, we'll travel. It'll get you through most days. Now, the second thing I think that's important to do is to get yourself a decent pair of socks. So um, I'm not talking about cotton socks uh, that you wear every day to school or whatnot. I'm talking about uh, merino wool socks. And I got these at my local uh, my local Sierra Outfitters, which is sort of a sort of the Walmart of outdoor stores, more or less, and they sell a lot of things like this. I bought these pair of socks for like seven dollars. So it's a wool sock. Um, it's not like a thick hiker sock, but one of the things it does is it keeps your feet cool enough in the summer and warm enough in the winter. And what's great about this is you can wear merino wool socks over the course of multiple days because they don't acquire smell and accumulate smell in the way a cotton material might. So you can wear it for a couple days, it won't smell too bad. And the only issues that you might have is if it gets really wet, you may need to like swap a pair out for another pair of merino wool socks and then just hang these out to dry, like maybe put them through a loop uh, on your backpack or something and they'll dry out pretty quickly. Um, get yourself some merino wool socks. This particular brand is called, uh, I know you probably can't see that, it's called Smart Wool. Smart Wool. Smart wool. <laughs> now, uh, when it comes to shoes, here's what you want to avoid. Uh, these are just some shoes I use kicking around my neighborhood. They're pretty much like, uh, like a pair of Vans or whatever, and they're super comfortable, but here's the thing about them. They have rubber soles with no tread on them at all, and when you're hiking in areas that have a lot of rocks and a lot of roots, all those rocks are gonna like poke into the bottom of your shoe and hurt your foot over the course of time. So while these are great for bumping around town and for fashion, if you're that kind of person, uh, they are not good for hikes. So hiking boots are the shoe that most people think about when they uh, wanna go for a long hike, and for good reason. Uh, this shoe here by Solomon, I've had for many years. I actually don't hike in it all that much. I took it out for a couple of summers and I liked it okay, um, but let me tell you why I didn't like it. And, and it sort of highlights uh, the strengths of the shoe, which sort of forced me in another direction. So this shoe, of course, has like a rugged, like tread pattern on the bottom because you're going over a lot of rocks and a lot of roots and it's gonna handle anything. But it is like super stiff. There's not a lot of bend in here. Um, it also has something called a toe cap, which is like a rubber toe cap here. And so when you're hiking and you hit rocks and you hit roots and stuff, it gives you a little bit of protection here. There's also a little bit of protection on the outside of this shoe as well as you're sort of clipping through different things. So this is sort of the Max Protect hiking shoe, more or less. It's low top, it has a good lacing system. Solomon is famous for that. But the reason why I didn't like it so much was because it was pretty unforgiving and pretty stiff. And um, over the course of many days hiking in this shoe, my feet just felt like they didn't want to ever put on a pair of shoes again. So that's kind of one of the things that you sort of trade off for a really stiff shoe on the bottom. Also, if your hiking shoes are not broken in and they are not yours, I would avoid these at all costs because if you're going on a multi-day, uh, many mile trip and it's not your shoe and you're breaking it in during that trip, you're gonna have a really hard time. And that's something we wanna avoid. So if you've got a shoe like this and it's yours and it's fully broken in, I say go for it. 
But if you don't, buyer beware. Now the next shoe you could probably think about is just sort of a standard trainer. Um, for the majority of people, this shoe is gonna like take you near and far and do just about everything that you need to. It doesn't have a toe cap, it's not really protected on the outside, but people wear these shoes every day and the reason why, and, and they go for long distances on hiking and, and regular running and all kinds of things. But over the course of a couple of days on a trail that's not too rugged, like you're not climbing mountains, but you're just doing some miles, this is gonna be probably just fine. If you notice it has like a tread pattern on the bottom that has a little bit of grip, that's gonna allow you to sort of get over rocks and roots. And if it rains, it'll probably be okay. Whereas a shoe like uh, that we showed you earlier that I'm currently wearing, a shoe like this in rain is gonna be really bad. You're gonna be totally slippy and slidey. So I think for the most part, uh, most folks can get by with a pair of solid, worn-in running shoes like this. So here's another option. This is a trail running shoe, and this is called the Solomon Sense Ride 3. They're on the Solomon Sense Ride 5 now, I believe, um, but this shoe sort of is in between the hiking boot and the regular running slash trainer shoe. It's got a little toe cap up front that offers some mild protection. It's got some protection on the sides, and then the lug pattern on the back will get you over rock and root pretty easily. Um, if you can find a version of this shoe or, or another trail running shoe in the $50 to $75 range, that's a pretty great that's a pretty great deal. In fact, I pretty much use shoes like this all the time for both trail running and hiking because they're a little bit lighter, they're a little bit more nimble, and they're super comfortable as compared to uh, a rigid hiking shoe that I just showed you guys earlier. So if I had to rank these shoes, this one's in last place because of the sole. Um, for me personally, the hiking shoe is next uh, in in fourth place, fourth place, I had to count the shoes to see how many I had. In fourth place is the hiking shoe. And then in third place, actually the second place, is this standard trainer that's gonna be good for just about anything. You can get really far on the trail in this. And then in first place, I think, is a, a hybrid sort of trail running shoe that will do both hiking and trail running. So whatever you decide uh, for your hiking adventures, I wish you well and I'll see you out there. Take care.